Nandini took the shining sword and hugged it to her chest with desire. Then she held her face together and kissed it with her black balls. For a moment it was as if a Keenik was kissing the lotus flower. In the next moment, a blood-red cloud appeared to block the full moon. Nandini's face then became like the beautiful face of Kali asking for blood sacrifice smeared by Kabalikas. Her face regained its old charm as she picked up the knife and set it aside as before. I don't know whether it is the will of the goddess that this sword should be thrust into the poisoned heart of any mortal with these hands accustomed to touching garlands, or whether it is the will of the goddess that I should thrust this into my chest with my own hand and smear the blood that swells like a bubble on this body adorned with clothes and ornaments, and die. The goddess who has given me this sword will let me know that too when the time comes. I am ready at any time, day or night, because I do not know when that time will come. Yes, it is a well-known news that the young queen of Palvur, who is known for her beauty, is very fond of clothes, ornaments and decorations. Day and night I have been decorating and beautifying my mane for sixty hours. Pity! And for him the great reaper, he is rejoicing in his glory, thinking that I am eternally and fully clothed in this way. He knows the fire that burns in my heart. Valavarayan, who was listening to all this like a delirious man, became self-conscious and said, Amini! Where is the great destroyer? He asked. Why? Are you afraid to see that old man? Said Nandini. No, madam. I'm not afraid to see them, what am I afraid of the slanderer? Vandiyathevan said. But for half an hour he came near me, how subdued he was. Forgetting his obligation to go to Adatakarakalar immediately, he follows me. He is ready to carry out with his head the task that I set with my feet. At the same time he trembles as he approaches me. Seeing that reminds me of something. As a small child I would have loved to see the fire burning. I will go near the fire. I will reach out my finger with desire to touch the embers of the fire. But he doesn't dare. I will suddenly take the finger. I have done this many times. That old memory came to me when I saw Parthipendra approaching my side and moving away in fear. What is only Paul Avon? Whose ambassador you took the straw and left Kanchi, so were those primitives. Ever since we were children, I have had an endless desire for him, also a fear. So how has my life changed? Sir! Will you have a message for me when you meet your master again? I have forgotten all that has passed. I am now the Rani of Punda Pavur, his grandmother's cousin. Don't be at all afraid to see me. I will not bite him and swallow him. Would you say that? Don't be at all afraid to see me. I will not bite him and swallow him. Would you say that? Don't be at all afraid to see me. I will not bite him and swallow him. Would you say that? Devi. It is not certain that I shall return alive to see Aditha Kari Kalar. If I do, I have so many messages to convey to him. I cannot promise to convey their messages. Please forgive me. Yes. You're the bravest person I've ever seen. You speak your mind. That's why I like you. Vinarkula warrior. I don't see many people. I don't travel in a chariot like the old brat. If I have to go somewhere, I go in a mudupalak. If I have to do something through someone, I call them. I just see. They are mostly cowards. They don't dare to say what's on their mind. You say what's on your mind. I know it's useless to shine, queen. No man's breast can hold a secret that their eyes cannot penetrate. That may be true. But I cannot yet know what is in your heart. Let me go, you asked about Palyavatarayar. My husband and Parthipendra have gone with their retinue to the neighboring village. There is a lot of gossip and dancing going on. They have gone to see if they can find out anything from the madman about the little prince. Fools! They have gone to the soothsayer without seizing whom they should have heard. It is too late to return. So I have brought you. Sir! I ask again. You know the truth about the prince, don't you? You won't tell me that, will you? 
Nandini scrutinized it and realized that it was the signet ring she had given him. Sir. I do not take back what I have given. I asked only to test your honesty. You have passed the test. I do not feel the need to test you with my men. You may keep the ring for my memory. She said. Ma'am. Think about it. If I have this, I will have to use it again when necessary. Don't worry about that. You can use it however you want. I'm going to blindfold you again and take you to the palanquin. They'll put you back where they caught you. What if I say no to that? You can't go back from this ruined palace and castle. You'll be back to where you started again and again. Goddess. This castle? This ruined palace? Yes, once upon a time this Chola Nadu was ruled by the Pallavas for a long time. Then the Pallava emperors built a fort and a palace here. Then the Chola Nadu was occupied by the Pandyas. The Pandya kings sometimes lived in this palace. During the Vijayalaya Chola period, a great war took place here. The fort collapsed and half of the palace was destroyed. Now we are in the unspoiled area. Some people call this fort Palavarayan Fort and others as Pandyarayan Fort. There is truth in both. But only those who know the way can get in and out. What do you say? Should I take my men and ask them to leave, or you will find the way yourself? No, goddess. I don't have time to find a way. Let those who brought me take me back. But, before I go, is there no other reason why they brought me? Is there nothing else I can do for them? If so, tell me. Very well, I will tell you as you ask. I want a flying horse. If you can, I can earn it and give it to you. What? You said flying horse. Yes, a flying horse. You mean the Arabian horse that can run as fast as it can fly? No, no. I can never mount such a horse. I do not mean a horse that runs with its feet on the ground. I mean a horse that spreads its feathers like a bird and flies in the sky. I have heard in stories that such miraculous horses exist somewhere in this world. Such a feathered flying horse is what I want. For what? To fly to heaven. Do you look like someone who can go to heaven if you look at me? I am not such a virtuous person. I have committed many deadly sins. Do people in heaven do only good deeds? They also commit sins there. They come to earth to seek reparation. When the things they have come to do, they go to heaven. No, I don't want to go to heaven. There is a desert in the Pandya country. In the middle of it there are some bare rocks. Rocks where grass and garlic do not grow. Some of them are full. Once upon a time the Digambarajines did penance in those mountains. Now snakes and foxes live in them. Devalaka to Amaravati. I like the Pandian desert rocks more than the city. Goddess. Their desire is amazing. If we go further, the sea water will freeze and harden due to extreme cold and people and animals will be able to walk. I want to see those places on a flying horse. Devi. I can't bring you such a flying horse. But there is an easy way to get to some of the places you mentioned. If you get on a good boat, you can go to Ceylon in half a day. If the ship goes. Sir. That way is not unknown to me. But I am afraid to see the sea. I am afraid to get on a ship. I am afraid even if the boat shakes when I cross the river. So your idea is of no use to me. You can go and come. Nandini got up saying that. Goddess. Do you have anything else to tell me? No. You look like you want to say something. I want to ask a question. I just want you to answer it. Didn't you come to Sri Lanka a few days ago? Didn't you stand alone in the dark shadows on the streets of Anuradhapura? Not at all. I have never ventured beyond the palace and guard of the purveyor. Why do you have such a suspicion? Amini. I saw you in Sri Lanka a few days ago. Are you talking about a flying horse? I thought maybe they really had such a horse and you came there on it. But the clothes were not made up and decorated like now. They wore only a simple sari and wore their hair down without making any kind of jewelry. 
you stopped. Aren't you the woman? No, I am not, sir. Did the woman you speak of open her mouth and say anything? No, she only spoke through the jar. But they have a familiarity with wizards. Maybe their subtle form got there because of such magic power. What if I, my mind and body are not there? She must be a woman who resembles them very much in form, and cannot speak. Nandini's gaze was somewhere far away. She let out a long sigh. Sir. You said you wanted to help me with something, didn't you? Yes. Is that what you really said? No doubt. Then hear this. If you ever see that woman again, somehow get her and bring her to me. If that's not possible, bring me to her at least. Said Nandini. Half an hour later, Vandiyathevan again stopped at the bank of Molayara. His horse also stood by. Those who brought him there disappeared in an instant. Even Devaralan was never seen. The god, who was driving his horse slowly along the banks of the Molya, traveled all night. In the third jama the comet reached its full growth and was seen covering a large part of the sky. He often wondered if there was really going to be any calamity due to the smoke that created panic in the hearts of the people or if this was just blind faith. Nandini's memory was also coming intermittently. All the words she said were well edged in his mind. The awkward feeling of seeing her for the first time in the Tanjore Palace is now gone. A kind of sympathy was created by the thought that she was the victim of some terrible suffering. But what is her purpose, what is her desire to do, on the one hand there was anger as what her real life history was a mystery. She also seemed to possess some kind of magical power, with incomparable beauty. So it is better not to have any relation with her anymore. It would have been nice if she had returned the palm-shaped ring. Did she refuse to buy it? Throw it in the river, didn't feel like it either. In this perilous time it may again be used for worship, why throw? Didn't feel like it either. In this perilous time it may again be used for worship, why throw? Didn't feel like it either. In this perilous time it may again be used for worship, why throw? If you go back to the old room and tell the youngest brat the news you need to tell, then you can throw it away. Never enter into such troublesome matters later. On the fourth night of Jama, Silver appeared in the eastern direction. Vandiyadeva had heard that one should not go against Sakra. After stopping the horse and tying it to a tree, he lay down on the ground and slept for a while.